Well, here we are again. Grassy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't. I do Packstand, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. At least it wasn't to the 49ers. Grassy, and here we are, folks. Uh, time to break down the Green Bay Packers lost to the Detroit Lions 20 to 16 in week 18 on Sunday night football at Lambeau Field, which has ended the Green Bay Packers 2022-2023 NFL season in heartbreaking fashion once again. Uh, This is, of course, deja vu for Packers fans as we have just had heartbreaking loss after heartbreaking loss after heartbreaking loss. The last three seasons have all come to an end in Lambeau. And it's uh, not as heartbreaking and soul-crushing as the previous two, but this one is up there. And, yeah, just had a lot of hope uh, for this season and how this was going to go. But, unfortunately, it didn't. And, I mean, the Packers, I don't think anyone could look at their entire season and go, like, this was a pretty good season. The Packers, up and down, you know, they started off pretty solid after the loss to the Vikings. They won three straight. Then they went down all the way to four and eight. Their season was effectively done. And then they go on this four-game win streak in which basically everybody counts them out. People are talking about starting Jordan Love and benching Aaron Rodgers and this, that, and the other thing. And instead, they go on this run. They beat the Rams. They beat the Bears previously. They beat the Dolphins. They beat the Vikings. And they beat the crap out of the Vikings. And everything fell their way. The Commanders lost to the Browns last week. Everything they needed was in front of them. They had control of their own destiny, and they just could not get it done against a division rival who had nothing to play for except the fact that they could bring the Packers down with them, and that is what Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions did tonight. And so there is going to be a lot of questioning a lot of soul-searching going on for the Packers organization in this offseason. Of course, you're going to have to deal with veterans. What's Aaron Rodgers going to do? In which he had his post-game press conference, and he said, hey, listen, it might be time to walk away, but after some time, he might think, never mind. You know, I got to go back out there, and I got to compete and try to win another one. He said he's not going to hold the team hostage, so he's just going to take some time and just try to figure that out. He said he wasn't going to assume if the Packers were just going to automatically want to bring him back, even though Matt LaFleur said absolutely they want him back. He is going to make a ton of money next year, so Aaron Rodgers would be walking away from a bunch of that. But it's not just Aaron Rodgers. There's guys like Mason Crosby, David Bakhtiari, Mercedes Lewis, Randall Cobb, all whose futures are may be up in the air. And that's stuff they're they're going to have to try and rectify in a season where they're going to be pretty constricted by the cap. So we're sitting here on January 9th, kind of just scratching our heads going, where do we go from here? Because how many heartbreaking losses does it take to try and figure out what's wrong? You look at Joe Barry, right, in which he had a rough season, a defense that was supposed to be top 10, maybe even top five, was supposed to be elite, and they had injuries to Eric Stokes and Rashawn Gary, and you thought that after the bye week, there was this shift that happened. They started getting turnovers. I talked about this stat last week, in that in 10 games, the Packers had a turnover, and in those 10 games, the first six, they had a combined eight turnovers, and in the last four, they had 12 Tonight, didn't do anything, and it seems like they reverted back to their old self. They had some good stops when they were put in precarious positions. They forced some field goals, but boneheaded mistakes and kind of just errors playing zone, playing off receivers when they just had to get five yards for a first down, and all these things just combined, and you saw kind of what you saw earlier in the season. It was just not complimentary football. The offense wasn't firing, and when they were, the defense wasn't, and vice versa. We've been talking about this all year, and it eventually ended the Packers' season tonight. Taking a look at Aaron Rodgers, 17 for 27, 205 yards, one touchdown, one interception, was also sacked twice, 
And sitting here right now, if Aaron Rodgers does walk away from football, his last throw as a Green Bay Packer will be an interception, just like Brett Favre's was, which is just hard to stomach right now. And Rodgers, he showed those flashes. You know, Rodgers been dealing with an injury, had a fractured thumb after the Giants game. And we've kind of looked at Rodgers going from back-to-back MVP to struggling this year, whether it was not being on the same page as wide receivers, whether it was dealing with an injury, or the more important thing, just the lack of consistency that was there. Aaron Rodgers is still a very good quarterback. He will tell you he still thinks he has a ton left in the tank, but the consistency in which he's making those amazing throws has definitely decreased, and it's been replaced with some mistakes. He had a really bad interception in which he had a wide-open wide receiver that thankfully was called back because of a penalty, but that was horrendous. On top of that, played hero ball, trying to throw it up to Christian Watson, who was the leading receiver tonight, into double coverage. Poorly thrown ball, ended an interception. And I know that he was under a bunch of pressure. Aiden Hutchinson had a very good game. But Rodgers has struggled this season. And even when he has struggled, he's still a very good quarterback. But it's just tough when you kind of lose that consistency. And this was a team that I didn't think needed and or needs that amazing hero ball Aaron Rodgers. But there are times where it winds up costing the team. Aaron Jones, 12 for 48, also caught 3 for 20, had a very costly fumble, which again, we have seen. We saw this last year with Mercedes Lewis against the 49ers, and it just kind of was very indicative of how the Packers' night was going to go. It Things weren't going to go their way. He fumbles it right near the sideline. It does not bounce out of bounds. And it winds up costing the Packers some points. Dylan, 9 for 33. We just really weren't efficient on the ground. Christian Watson, 5 for 104. He was the leading receiver, as I said before. Lazard, 4 for 41 with a touchdown. Talking about the offense, just besides the fumbles, you had drops, you had interceptions, you had missed opportunities, you have end arounds with Alan Lazard, which just don't make sense. You're going for it on fourth and one on your own side of the field, and that's the play you decide to call And I understand being aggressive, and I actually like that aspect, but to call that play just really didn't make a lot of sense to me. How many times are we going to run it out of the shotgun also? The Packers had no touchdowns in the first half of this game, which was just like their first game against the Lions. They were also shut out in the fourth quarter. And then that's just the offense looking at the defense. Good God. Rasul Douglas making a mistake in which he's swatting the ball, winds up moving the Lions closer right before halftime. They're able to kick a field goal. Quay Walker ejected for the second time this season after pushing personnel from the Lions. He did it against the Bills, got ejected for that, did it against the Lions, and Quay Walker has been a really good football player in this stretch of games. But you cannot make these boneheaded decisions because it's costing the team. And without Quay Walker on the field, it's going to hurt them. So I don't know if it's an anger thing. I don't know if it's just getting the emotions getting to him. But either way, he's a rookie. He's a young guy. You got to play better than that because it's going to cost the team. So all of those things just come down to missed opportunities. The Packers shot themselves in the foot. They had so many chances. The the red zone offense was horrendous again, especially in the first half. They could have gotten touchdowns, and instead they walked away with either field goals or nothing. And at the end of the day, you can't allow a team like the Lions, who are not the same old Lions, to hang around because they will beat you. And that's what they did. Jared Goff, 23 for 34, 224 yards. Not a single touchdown, not a single interception. Only one sack, lack of a pass rush yet again. The Lions didn't do anything crazy. They played efficient, mistake-free football and just capitalized on the Packers making mistakes. Jamal Williams, 16 for 72, had two touchdowns. And listen, I love Jamal Williams. I don't like seeing him in a Lions uniform, but he became their premier back this year. And it showed he not only tied Barry Sanders' rushing TD record for a season, but he broke it and had 17 rushing touchdowns on the season. So a big shout out to Jamal Williams. Swift, 6 for 25, also caught 7 balls for 61 yards. Glee Raymond was the leading receiver, 4 for 66. And yeah, that was it. That's all they did. They got after Aaron Rodgers. They pressured him. David Bakhtiari did a very nice job against Aiden Hutchinson, so they just moved Aiden Hutchinson over, and that was effective. At the end of the day, we're sitting here only scoring 16 points against one of the worst defenses in the league, and that is pretty damn disappointing. So now, as I said before, we sit here 
with a lot of questions in the offseason. What do you do with Joe Barry? Matt LaFleur is not going to get fired, but there are some questions that have stemmed not just from this season, but from previous seasons. What do you do with him? What do you address in the draft? Right now, the Packers have the 15th overall pick in the draft, and I know that people are going to say, this is why we should have started Jordan Love, but listen, you know, you, you go on a run when you can, and the Packers did, and they were five points away from making it into the postseason, and yeah, they may have lost against the 49ers again this weekend, but... I would have liked to at least seen him in the dance, especially against a weak NFC conference. And I think that's, again, just the theme of this year has been disappointment because if you have the Packers team of last year or the previous year, I mean, I think they do pretty well. And unfortunately, we just did not have that team. So we sit here now, Lambeau Field, another primetime loss, ending the Packers season, and you just have to figure out what the hell is going on And more importantly, how do you fix it? Packers didn't have the answers this season. They looked like they had some of them for four games. But at the end of the day, we're just sitting here wondering why. So obviously a very disappointing season. Um, You know, I want to take a second. I wanted to thank all of you for watching. I'm still going to be working. There's plenty of content to come out. I'll be streaming every single playoff game. You know, we'll do team reactions, the whole nine yards. But We had 30,000 people in the live stream uh, tonight, which is incredible. Um, I've worked my ass off this season to an attempt to try to entertain you and to also give back because I have a platform that, quite honestly, I feel I need to earn every single day. Um, So whether that's with the charity work we do or whether that's lifting up other creators, I just appreciate you giving this any sense of time. I know there was plenty of people on there just to kind of throw salt in the wound, but... It's greatly appreciated. So thank you for that. And before I get out of here, I want to do a big shout and thank you to some brand new YouTube members over on the Grassy Posse Plus. We got Bill Fry, Silver Harvest, Sir Pop-Tart, Andrew Frund. We have Garbage Stream Highlights, Chase Stratford, Nestor of Pylos. We have Luke Lawrence, Day 500 Champ 15, Aqua. We have Zev Eno, Tony Maxwell, MS. We got Austin. We got Jacob Strand. We got Brett Murray. We got Rico Danube. We have Thomas Grimes and Adam Bryant. A big shout out and thank you to you all. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. A shout out to the Lions. Uh, It's unfortunate because I was hoping for the Rams to win just because this would be a winner-take-all matchup. Instead, the Seahawks have maced the postseason and Lions, they swept the Packers this year. And considering they uh, have a pretty good draft pick, they're going to be a problem for years to come. The NFC North is just going to get more competitive and we'll see if the Packers can keep up. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com or at TomGrossyComedy. All social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grossy. And as always, Go Pack Go.